Hey guys, what's up? Brett Mix here, Macho Wrestling 101, here for another uh, Monday Night Wars review. I uh, just want to say I'd certainly invite you to subscribe to my channel if uh, if you enjoy what's been going on on my channel lately with the Monday Night Wars. I stick up to date with Ross, SmackDown, and the like as well. It's June 3rd, 1996, week 35 of the wars. Uh, this week, for the third straight week, Nitro 1 3.0 was the rating. Raw got a 2.3, so through 35 weeks, Nitro has 17 wins, 16 losses to Raw, and 2 draws. So one more win than Raw. This is the Nitro with the 3.0 rating. Nitro begins with Shivani again as we get new commentators for the first hour of Nitro. The living legend Larry Sabisco and Tony Shivani, And then in the second hour we have Bobby the Brain Heenan with Eric Bischoff. Normally Steve McMichael would be there, but he's training with Kevin Green for their Great American Bash match against the Horsemen. Really selling that angle so he's not on commentary. Mean Gene introduces the shark, but he comes out with no shark attire. He's John Tenta. He says, I'm John Tenta. Every morning, I, everybody laughs at me in the neighborhood with my hair cut. I'm a man. I'm John Tenta. So John Tenta goes in there with Big Bubba. And uh, in the end, Big Bubba is slammed by John Tenta. And Big Bubba wants nothing to do with him after the hair clippers were grabbed. He walked off, and John Tenta won by countout at 104. I rated it a quarter of a star. Next, the Faces of Fear, Mang and the Barbarian took on High Voltage, Chaos, and Ruckus, who make their debuts in the WCW. They showed some good tandem offense at the beginning with a double shoulder block, but the Barbarian and Mang wore them down with a trapezius hold, a double hip toss, a shoulder breaker, a body slam, uh, a back breaker, belly to belly suplex. Ruckus uh, was hit in the big with a big boot by Mang. At 323, Mang hit the Mafia kick. After Barbarian tore him apart, so the spot of the match was the belly-to-belly -belly suplex from the Barbarian off the top rope uh, to one of Ruckus or Chaos. The face is a fear win, and I gave it a star and a half. Luger and Stinger backstage. Luger explains his actions from last week and the match for tonight for the belts. Luger says friends don't suplex friends on the floor to the Steiners who come and argue with them, so they have a war of words leading to their main event match tonight. Next, Sergeant Craig Pittman with Teddy Long versus the Disco Inferno. By the word, no. By the way, no halt word on Scott Hall yet from last week. No word on any of that. They, they leave that to the end of the show. Sergeant Craig Pittman with, versus the Disco Inferno. The pit bull takes on the men with the Disco Fever. Teddy Long for a second. I won't sing that again. <laughs> Teddy Long for a second week in a row was with the pit bull, Sergeant Craig Pittman. Who takes on the Disco Inferno, who hits a offensive move, but Craig Pittman was about to hit the code red, and the Disco ran himself away, and uh, Craig Pittman gets the win at 150 as Disco Inferno taps out. He says, if, if I didn't tap out, I wouldn't be able to do this. So he says he's it's mind over matter. So I rated it at a quarter of a star as Disco Inferno didn't want to be put in the code red. He tapped out early so he could still Disco dance. That's the, that's the basic of that match. Luckily, it's not a dud, but I rated it a quarter of a star. Lord Steven Regal took on Jim Duggan. The fans chant USA, which bothers Regal. He circles around the ring and then hits a European uppercut. Jim Duggan comes back with three clotheslines and then he louds out aloud. Oh. Steven Reichel. Uh, Steven Reichel. Steven Regal went for a left, the southpaw, but Jim Duggan let, let, let a ton of rights. Duggan eats a high knee off the top rope as uh, Regal comes back with a knee lift. Duggan comes back with rights into the corner and a back body drop. Duggan in control and then Eaton and Taylor come out. The Blue Bloods come to save Regal. Uh, in the end, at 421, Regal wins after he rolled up Jim Duggan after he hit the other Blue Bloods off the apron, distracting him. So Regal got the roll-up victory. Rated it a star and a quarter. Regal on the mic says uh, he wants Sting at the America, Great American Bash. Kevin Sullivan next took on Prince Aiki. Or Ayuko or Aiki. I forget how to pronounce it. It's I A U K E A. Uh, sorry about the pronunciation. It's his debut. They show a video package on Sullivan and Benoit's history. Sullivan throws Prince Aiki. I'll just call him Aiki. Prince Aiki. Uh, who's making his debut to the outside of the ring. Sullivan with a double stomp, and that's it. After a running knee and a double stomp, Sullivan wins at 122. Rated it a half a star. Afterwards, Jimmy tell, uh, Hart tells Sullivan that they don't need extra drama, and he says, Hogan will be come back looking for you. Me and the horsemen, Sullivan says he knows uh, the serpents like you. The way you crush the serpents is to crush the eggs. So we got to do the same, says Sullivan, as he's making a promo with the horsemen against Hogan, I guess. 
uh, hour two starts as the Pyros begin as Four Horsemen take on Rock and Roll Express. Ricky and uh, Ricky and Rob uh, Robert are making their return to the wrestling, but the Pyros go off after their entrances. So hour two begins as Bischoff grabs the commentary mic, the headset, old school tag match here. Uh, Morton unleashes on R and H. You know Flair's on the defense when woman screams because she screams every time something happens to Flair. She screams. She screams bloody murder. Well, maybe that's not the best uh, term for woman, but she screams all the time. Flair and uh, Flair and Arn out wrestled, so they go for a walk and they have to take a break in the action. They come back from the commercial. And a Japanese armbar takedown. Flair with a thumb to the eye after he begs Ricky Morton not to hit him. And uh, Flair basically and Arn just isolate Morton for the next what seems like 10 to 15 minutes. And Robert Gibson finally gets a hot tag, comes in and cleans house. And uh, that's basically the bulk of the match. At 8.59, Rock and Roll lose after Woman, after Heenan comes to the ring and tells Woman to do something. Woman raked the face of Robert Gibson and Arn Anderson plans him with a DET. And they got the victory at 18.59. Heenan, after the match, uh, says that he'll be the team's coach. Uh, mean Gene speaks with Art and Flair, and Flair says, what about the woman? And Heenan says he's not going to manage, but he'll be their coach at the Great American Bash against Kevin Green and uh, McMichael. They run a teaser trailer for the Vignette for Glacier, the wrestler. The Giant then with Jimmy Hart takes on Ice Train for, ice train for the world title. Giant just choke slums him and beats him in seconds, a quarter of a star. Giant retains the world title. Scott Norton versus Hugh Morris. Norton pushed him around, but Norton just choke slammed. Still by the Giant because the Giant hadn't left the ring. Hugh Morris then comes to the ring and starts mocking Scott Norton, who's laid out from the Giant's choke slams. So Hugh Morris plays around, puts his finger on Scott Norton to pin, and then go, goes like this at the two count and just play toys with him like a cat would play with a dead mouse or even a live mouse. But Scott Norton's the dead mouse in this analogy because he's de- down from the Giant's previous choke slams. But then while Morris is playing to the camera, Norton gets up. And he's uh, Norton was supposed to catch Morris, who comes off the ropes in the midair, but he botched it and dropped him. And then he picked him up and slammed him weakly for a victory at 151. This match had one spot, and then they botched it. So, uh, dud. That's a dud. I don't give duds out. If you, you guys have followed my reviews, I don't give duds out ever, but mostly ever. When a lot of the matches could be, but that's a dud. If a match has one spot in a minute 51 and you screw it up and it includes Hugh Morris and who is the other guy in this match? Scott Norton. So they do X's and O's game plans. Steve McMichael and Kevin Green on the outside uh, for their match at the Great American Bash, but they have a wild card. Randy Savage is going to be their coach. He's not allowed in the building or to wrestle yet contractually but he's allowed to coach and he's on the commentary team and he didn't begs for savage not to be uh, on the phone during the main event between the steiners and lex and sting who go at it for the tag team titles next so heenan's mad and savage take takes over saying that i'm going to be the coach uh lex tried the torture rack the giant came in and double dq'd everyone as the giant laid out everyone with choke slimes he's going for luger because he defends the world title versus luger at the great american bash he didn't beg for macho man on commentary after the match to i gave the match two stars after the match he didn't begs on commentary not for savage to be the coach but that's what it ends up being the show ends with bischoff being confronted by scott hall uh who is back to challenge Bischoff at the time in WCW, but he's not going to be alone. And Bischoff says, who is this we you're always talking about? And Sting says, why don't we go on one-on-one? We don't see any we. So Hall says, I got a big surprise for you next week. Throws the toothpick at Sting. Sting slops him in the face. Bischoff goes off the air. So what's his big surprise? We all know what that's going to be next week. We'll have to tune in to find out. So week 35, I gave this a 6 out of 10, even though most of the matches blew. It was the build of the matches, and it won the ratings 3.0 to 2.3. So we'll see Kevin Nash's debut next week on Nitro. And it is a two-year victory for Nitro after next week's show. So things are just getting interesting. I'm Brett Mix. Thank you for watching this Nitro review, and we'll see you on the next one.